Hi, my name is Valerie Thomason Gear, and this is my Understanding My Community presentation. Um, for the past three years, I've worked for Morris County, um, USD 417, so that's what this presentation will be about. I'm actually getting ready to move into um, Fort Riley Middle School, so kind of a transition period for me, but and, um, I've been with Morris County for three years now, like I said, so I understand the community a little better, so that's why I chose to use them for this presentation. Um, some known customs and traditions. Um, we, uh, Morris County was established on February 11, 1859. It was named after Thomas Morris, who was a U.S. Senator. They're a um, very, very historical community. They're actually known for being one of the last places to stop and buy things before going west on the Santa Fe Trail. Um, some of the community aspects, there's a hospital, there's a life center where there's daycare, swimming pool, exercise facility. Um, this was a new addition within the last few years that they've added. There's a, a lake right outside of Council Grove in Morris County. They're known for being in the Flint Hills. There's a nice pretty um, downtown river walk, a lot of downtime, down shops and businesses, and it's just known for kind of being the cute little um, town to visit. Um, some of the traditions and events that they hold, they hold Washunga Days every year. They actually just finished this um, last weekend or the weekend before. Um, it's always held in the third weekend in June, and it's to celebrate the Ka Indians. And they were one of the um, first group to settle in the area, and they always have a big play and entertainment. There's always parades, and that's a big thing for Council Grove every year. They also have a very large uh, Relay for Life group. Um, one of the things when I first joined in, in the community, I, it was surprising to see a big turnout for the Relay for Life and the survivors that they've had in the community and coming out and everyone supporting that um, cause. Um, Old Settlers Day is another day where they come out and do a lot of 4-H presentations and a lot of information about history. And they have the gathering in the Grove every year, which is where arts um, people gather and they display their art and people can come in and look and buy and things like that. So that's kind of an artistic side of the town. Um, some of our population characteristics, Morris County population is approximately 5,700. It goes up and down, um, but it's right about there. Uh, um, white is 93.1%. There's a very small African American, American Indian, or um, biracial people. Um, Hispanic group is growing rapidly. Um, I'm not sure the cause for that. It just seems like every year we seem to get more and more Hispanic children in our classes. Um, languages other than English spoken in the household, we're looking right about 3%. So that's something that we've had to learn to accommodate as an educator. There's not a lot of diversity, but the community is always changing due to the closeness of Fort Riley, Junction City, and the Manhattan communities. You have a lot of professors that move into K-State. You have a lot of military families in and out. So they're starting to see a lot more diversity in um, the students in our classroom. Some communication things. Um, there's a lot of websites um, there's the Morris County websites, the City of Council Groves, and then also the USD 417 website for the school district. Two major radio stations that you can get in Morris County. There's a lot that you can get from Topeka and Manhattan and areas, but one's mainly in Council Grove area since that seems to be the hub of the county. Um, it's 97.5 and 104.7. Um, television, WIBW and KTKA, where we always um, show like our school closings, things like that. Um, newspaper, Council Grove Republican, Prairie Post is where we post sports activities, all of our budget information, those are our primary newspaper locations. We have a lot of community um, people that are involved and so we had, I had to narrow my list down. I was getting a large list of community groups but I think that's a great thing because our kids have a lot of um, where places to show that their involvement. Big, si big Brothers, Big Sisters, Youth Sports, Booster Club, American Legion, Cat Backers Club, Go Case Stay. Um, a lot of kids active in 4-H. Um, one of the things that we have a Butler Community College office in Council Grove. We have a lot of 
parents who are trying to go back and get degrees, a lot of kids who are trying to work and de get degrees at the same time. So I thought that was really awesome when we moved there. Um, there's a lake association because the lake is right there and the alumni association, um, historical society, rodeo club, arts council, um, a lot of community um, churches and religion classes go on. And of course we have a very active PTO with a small community of a, a lot of active parents and that's always great. Um, our known leadership um, for the count county and the city we have our of course county commissioners uh, mayor Steve Shepard we have the city council city administrator and then the city clerk for the school board we have our president of the school board we have seven total members our superintendent and then as far as our building administration we have one high school principal with an assistant principal slash athletic director we have two elementary middle school principals and then one of those principals has an assistant so with our town, with our um, district being spread out among different towns, it requires a lot of administration because we're spread out so far. Um, let's see, leader characteristics. Much of the school administration has lived in the area for a long time, had family there, um, knows the values and the um, beliefs of the town and the historic um emphasis that people put on Council Grove. So I think it's great to have people that know what's going on and know what people value. Um, some issues is that we have, we call it the good old boy situation, um, where they've known someone so they maybe let them slide a little too much, where they should have maybe got on them a little prompter about what they were doing. So we have had some issues with um, maybe people knowing each other too well. We do have some new administration to the area, and that's been a good, um, just different view on things to kind of say, well, what about this? Have you thought about that? Just to kind of help um, broaden the horizon, because if you've lived there your entire life, you might not know what other people are doing in other areas. Um, economic conditions. Our unemployment for the Morris County is 4.9%. Um, which doesn't, I thought it would probably, might be higher. Um, we have a pretty low income area. About 50% of our students qualify for free and reduced. So this was um, a little shocking to me that that unemployment rate was not, I thought it would be higher, honestly. Um, median household income was about 45,000 and that was from 2008 to 2012. So um, not, not a bad household income. Um, but you still, we still have students struggling with free and reduced. So, um, at one point in the county, we had a population of over twelve thousand people, and that's just steadily. Um, it's been a slow decrease in population, but a steady decrease in enrollment. We have a lot of students who choose to go to other districts for um, schooling. So, that's one of the. Can, that's one of the things that um, our district has struggled with lately is decrease in enrollment. Some known social tensions, and this is actually a, a, a fairly um, high priority in, in the lives of our, as, as us as educators in this area. Um, we, do, we do have little diversity, so we have had some minor acceptance issues when um, some different people have moved into the area. Um, but our major cause of issue has been kind of a north versus south um, argument. Major debates on school finance and possible school closures have come up. It's causing major issues between communities and even colleagues. We have um, people in different areas all being serviced by one district and district finance has been a big issue and so they're trying to decide what they're going to do and it's it's been tough on people. It's caused quite a few issues. Um, and then you have the haves and the have-nots. Um, there's a big divide in people with in well um, well they're well off and they have a, a nice good income coming in and then our students who struggle with the, uh, families that struggle with income and so it's it causes issues with students we've had fights we've had suicides we've had um, the popular crowd and the non-popular kids really go at it and so we've tried to equalize things at school as much as we can. 
but if anyone has ever lived in a small town, you know that everyone knows everything that's going on. And so the gossip train, as I like to call it, never ends. There's always something going on between, um, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so. Their, you know, marriages are falling apart or um, there's just always something going on. So there's there's some minor issues like the gossiping, but then there's also some major issues with them. Um, school finance, budgeting, and possible school closures. I found a lot of great information from um, the city sites, like the City of Council Grove site, um, the school website, and things like that. And I also found some information from the Census Bureau. So this is just a list of my sources that I used in um, getting my information. So, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much.